Ladies and gentlemen, also from my side, I'm Bruno Amatino, uh, I'm BMW of course, and I was responsible for the interior of this wonderful new car. I'd like to point out in the next minutes uh, some highlights of the design of the new BMW 3 Series. When we first started working on this car, we uh, had the task to make a big step forward in terms of design. In the interior, furthermore, we had uh, the challenge to um, showcase the digital content in a most uh, efficient and most emotional way. You can see here behind me is the key sketch that was selected for the design of the interior. And you can see here the driver orientation has been interpreted in a completely new way. This is, I come to the first highlight. The first highlight is the center display in the center stack which is a one-piece curved glass. This is a, one, a world first. It's the first time that anyone has ever done it. And together with the panel, the high gloss panel on the left side of the instrument binnacle, it creates a flow of motion towards the binnacle. So that in front of the driver, the driver has a unique, new interpretation of the characteristic BMW driver orientation. A new feature of the interior of the BMW 3 Series is the fact that we have lowered the center display at the same level as the instrument binnacle, creating a horizon of information in front of the driver and together with the head-up display we have a triangle of information flowing from the right to the middle and pulling literally visually the driver towards the front of the car, creating a new way of dynamic. Einstein binnacles themselves are an icon in their own right and uh, when we reinterpreted them for the new 3 series we uh, used the opportunity of the digitalization to make them more three-dimensional, to use in a more efficient way the space that we have available and we did something unconventional, we turned the rev counter around so that it goes counterclockwise. Why did we do this? Because uh, by doing that, we free up more space in the middle of the instrument binnacle, so you, the customer has more space for maps or for additional information. Around the driver area, the rest of the cockpit of the interior is, uh, of course, designed according to what we saw in the uh, film uh, from Mr. Van Hoydonk. Uh, we have reduced, we have calmed the surfaces, we have very few lines, very precise lines. Um, one inspiration was uh, a tailoring, like a tailored suit, you have a, like, a very clear crease and very calm and high value surfaces around them. An example of this is the passenger side of the dashboard. You have a, a diagonal crease, a diagonal character line running from the middle of the, uh, uh, of the instrument panel all the way to the A-pillar. And this creates a, a high tension surface, a very calm and very sleek surface uh, around the dashboard. Um, in general, the dashboard has become very, very slim, very horizontal oriented, oriented. And we uh, took the opportunity to reinterpret the way we use materials. For the first time, we have uh, reduced the amount of decoration in a, in a consistent way. In the dashboard, we have, uh, for example, on the passenger side, only a small strip of uh, decoration. In the door, we have eliminated the decoration altogether. On the other hand, we have highlighted the chrome accents around the cockpit, making them very precise, very thin. They have a diamond cut uh, chamfered section. Uh, the inspiration here was they should look like uh, they, as if they're milled from a full piece of material. This makes them even more precise and more high-tech looking. Going into the door from the cockpit, uh, you might have noticed we have uh, decided to uh, concentrate all the main elements in the middle of the door, liberating the top part. The top part is now very calm, very clean and untouched. And this creates a unique horizon around the driver um, so that the dashboard is even more emphasized in its width. And by clustering all the elements in the middle, we uh, had the opportunity to create a, a, a very bespoke and very high quality elements exactly where the customer are touching them the armrest, the door pull, the door handle, and uh, the window switches, for example. And early in the design of the door, 
uh, we realized if you would have done a traditional grab handle, a vertical grab handle, it would have interrupted the flow of the lines. So we decided very early on to uh, remove, uh, to uh, not do a traditional grab handle, um, but rather to do a small uh, door pull, so that, and it's hidden so that the customer can still use it, but still have an uninterrupted flow of the lines and create a very sleek and very slim uh, armrest in the door. As you heard in the film before, um, a unique feature also of the interior is the fact that we have clustered all the main functions into, into these clusters. Um, it has two advantages. The first advantage is that uh, the customer does not have to look anymore for the different switches. They know exactly in the center console everything regarding driving is concentrated in this area. Uh, for example, the dashboard, everything that creates uh, uh, and makes uh, climatization or uh, heating and cooling is concentrated in this area. And the second advantage is that it, it uh, frees up the space around these islands uh, to create more bespoke materials. You have less gaps, less uh, change of materials and a calmer and more progressive design. Coming to the exterior, the exterior is of course a big challenge also here with the colleagues have the same uh, challenge to make a big step. Additionally, of course, uh, the heritage of the 3 Series is in the seventh generation, so they had to also consider, of course, the big uh, burden of having such an icon to reinterpret such a, a strong icon. We start with the front. Um, the highlight of the front, of course, is the uh, characteristic BMW kidney grill. In the three seats for the first time, it's uh, interpreted in a more three-dimensional way. So it wraps around, the bonnet, around the, the, the bonnet here, it wraps around the lights here, so it creates a more three-dimensional shape that is interesting to look also from all different perspectives. Also, the headlamps are very three-dimensional. They also wrap around very far into the wing. And the inside, the icons, the traditional icons have also been completely reinterpreted in a very modern and progressive way and also distinctive according to which kind of light you have, if you have laser or if you have the LED light. Here, in the lower graphic, we have a, a homage to the fourth generation 3 Series, the E46. I think many of you are in the clubs or are very big fans of the traditional BMWs. And this is a little bit of a twinkle in the eye, it's a little bit uh, uh, it's a... Um, a homage to this uh, E46, uh, where the icons are cutting into the bumper in a three-dimensional way. In general, the front is a closed design. Closed means that uh, we want to have uh, as much uh, body color as possible, visible, and as clean as possible. The openings are only there when they're technically necessary. Uh, and one example here is the uh, air duct for the, for, the, for the braking and for the uh, air breather, for aerodynamic reasons. It was inspired by the Naker duct. Anybody who's in, uh, who knows about aeronautics knows that the Naker duct is the most efficient way of getting cool air into an opening. And we designed, uh, made a feature out of it, also including the, the fog light into it. On the side view, come to the side view, of course, you notice the very strong muscular proportions of this car. It's uh, definitely a rear wheel drive car, and we show it in the design. Uh, we have a, a very long wheelbase, a long hood, stretched, short overhangs. The cap is pushed as far rearward as possible. And also here we have concentrated on very few, very uh, uh, high, uh, highly defined details. For example, uh, the feature line which is running from the rear of the front wheel all the way to the back. This line is breaking up the height of the, of the vehicle, making it more slim, and also stretching the proportions. Also, the greenhouse has been uh, newly interpreted. We have pushed it optically further back. Uh, we have a unique uh, uh, treatment of the uh, iconic uh, Hofmeister King. Uh, we've pushed it beyond, for the first time, beyond uh, the gap, uh, the, the cut line of the rear door, creating an additional stance towards uh, the rear. Aerodynamics were also a major uh, factor uh, by the with the design of the exterior. Uh, we didn't see it as a challenge, but we saw it as a possibility, as an opportunity to um, create new design elements. One example of this is the, uh, the line that is going from the back, back of the rear wheel, around the rear lights, onto the deck lid and onto the other side. This line creates a very three-dimensional shape to the rear end that makes it more muscular. 
On the other hand, it also creates a leading edge for the air to break off, uh, improving the uh, aerodynamic efficiency. The rear lights themselves are very sleek. They have the traditional the iconic uh, L shape, which has been new, newly interpreted. The inspiration here was the I-8. And we have a two-tone uh, design. All the additional functions are blackened out and have been recessed in order to further emphasize the L shape of the icon. Today you had the chance to uh, see two model variations, the Sport line and the M Sport model. Here you have the Luxury line. Um, when, uh, at the end of the presentation, um, you can, we can, when we get together, you'll have a, a closer look and I can show you the detailing of the Luxury line. But this is the third model in the line of the 3 Series. Of course, the front is differentiated and also the rear and is differentiated according to which model you have. Yeah, I come to the end of my presentation. Uh, it was just a very, very short, concentrated um, highlights of the interior and the exterior of this design. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And after the presentation, when you can get together, I can answer any questions you have. Thank you very much.